Bailey and welcome to another bookish video. This is going to be the first daily vlog of Haley Ween. I am so, so excited to be here with you guys. I have a massive book haul today to kick off Happy Haley Ween, the readathon that I'm hosting. And of course, we're going to be reading my TBR for Happy Haley Ween. You saw me get started last night with Something Akin to Revulsion by Judith Sonnet. This is the book that I'm using to fulfill my indie published reading prompt for the readathon. And yes, I cheated a little bit. I did start Wednesday night. Today is Thursday. Listen, it's my readathon. If I want to start at midnight the night before, like technically it's not cheating. I make the rules. So I am halfway through this short story collection and I am so excited to tell you guys about it because I love it. Obviously, this is extreme horror, so beware going in. It is extremely graphic, but if you like just little pop short stories that are horrifying and will leave you like at the last page, like that is what this is. Out of the first three stories, I would say the first one, it was gross, but it was intended to be gross. I'm gonna give it a five star. The second one was definitely a five star. That was my favorite one that I've read so far. And the third one was probably a four star. So she really doesn't miss. We know this about Judith Sonnet. Uh, this extreme short story collection is wonderful. I can't wait to read her other ones just based on this one. I'm definitely going to be finishing up the next three stories and completing my first book of Haley Ween uh, sometime this morning. But before we do any reading or anything like that, I do have to make my coffee. Y'all know I do it every morning. So cut to the B-roll. Surprise, we have voiceover on this B-roll because today's vlog is sponsored by Atlas Coffee Club. Atlas Coffee Club is a coffee subscription that curates the world's best coffee and delivers it right to your door. With 50 plus countries around the globe producing amazing coffee, their mission is to connect you with the world's best. From Papua New Guinea to Peru, Burundi to Brazil, each month, Atlas Coffee Club highlights and delivers coffee and culture from a new country. Now coffee lovers can unlock a whole world of coffee discovery they couldn't have otherwise or elsewhere. So here I am making my cold brew. They sent over the grounds for me to make cold brew because that's the way that I usually do it. Well, actually Cameron usually does it. That is why I was struggling to open the cap at the beginning. And I'm super excited to try this coffee coffee they sent a bunch of fun things along with it like a postcard from the country that it came from and tasting notes and here I am mixing in the cream and getting ready to tell you guys more about Atlas Coffee Club. Yes I am so excited that today's vlog is sponsored by Atlas Coffee and I'm gonna go ahead and do a taste test for you guys. Oh my gosh, that is really good. I actually really taste the difference. Having like not a coffee blend, but pure grounds from a foreign land. This is so cool. I feel very cultured. I feel like a coffee girl and not like a poser coffee girl <laughs> that just like goes into every coffee shop ever and orders a chai latte. Like I feel very cultured. First of all, this is absolutely delicious, but let me tell you a little bit more about the brand. So I know I mentioned that Cameron makes me my cold brew, but you can actually tell them the way that you prefer to have your coffee and they will help you out. And they actually sent me these cute little instructions of how to make cold brew if you didn't know, which, like we have a fiance for that, but if you needed that, that I thought was really nice. And of course, the bags that they sent are so, so cute. The one that I tried this morning was obviously the grounds from India. And they also sent two more, so I'm gonna show those to you guys. This coffee is from Rwanda. Look at this cute bag, I can't get over it. And this one is from Nicaragua. Oh my gosh, this one's so pretty. And again, they all come with a little postcard and the tasting notes in every single box. 
Basically, when you have the Atlas Coffee Club subscription, it's like a world tour of coffees and you have so much variety. You can taste from all the different regions like I showed you. And it's all super fresh and roasted to order. And it's completely tailored to you. Like they know that I like cold brew, so they gave me those little instructions. You can also specify if you like a light roast versus a dark roast. I like something kind of medium, so that's what I got. And it can be delivered on a flexible schedule, exactly what you prefer. You can cancel or pause or just skip at any time, they are super flexible. Atlas is very accommodating, just like any tour guide should be, and that is exactly what they are. They take you all throughout the world, and because they have these relationships with different coffee providers all around the world, I was concerned about sustainability, but they really are sustainable. They are great for the planet. They pay fair trade prices for every single coffee and make sure that the people at the source are are getting the compensation they deserve. And of course, the best part is that Atlas maintains one of the most approachable price points of any monthly coffee subscription. They just want everyone to enjoy really quality coffee. So if you go to my link down below, it's atlascoffeeclub.com slash Haley. You can get 50% off of your first order of Atlas coffee and free shipping. Hello, half off and free shipping. This is an amazing deal if you wanna try out this coffee. So thank you so much to Atlas for sponsoring this video and let's get into the rest of the Haleyween vlog. I am back from work. I'm literally done working today, which is so nice. I rescheduled my usual Thursday clients to earlier in the week so I could have time during Halloween to vlog and hang out with you guys. But I just finished my first book of Happy Halloween. I'm so excited. It is something akin to Revulsion, the one that I was talking about this morning. I gotta give this five stars. Like, it was just so fun. If you like extreme horror, you'll really like this one. The last three stories that I read just now, I would give the fourth story in the collection four stars, the fifth one five stars, and the last one five stars. The last one was probably my favorite in the whole collection because it was a real departure from what we usually get from Judith Sonnet. I love her writing style. And she said in her like afterward, that the last one was really a challenge for her to write, but I would love to see more of that from her. She has just such a gift. I love the way that she writes horror. It, it just, it's unlike anyone else that I've ever read from. It captures this chilling atmosphere. Ooh, it's just so good. It is depraved, it is gross. Here are the trigger warnings if you wanna pause and read, but, it's great if you are into extreme horror like I am. So check, one prompt is done and one five-star read for the first book of Halloween, yay. The next book that I'm gonna be reading is Gone to See the River Man by Christopher Triana. But before I start this, I do wanna do a little bit of a haul for y'all. I have been collecting books over the past month or so for different reasons. And I wanted to post a haul video and I figured why not do it for the kickoff of Happy Halloween. It is your treat <laughs> for participating in Halloween and watching this video. We're gonna do a book haul. Hello, hello, let's do a haul. I have a massive stack of books here. We have 22 books to go through that have come into my possession throughout the last month. Let's go ahead and get into it. I will start with the one I'm most excited for, which is They Were Here Before Us by Eric LaRocca. Look at this beautiful novella. I mean, some people wouldn't think this is beautiful because it is like innards and bugs and dead animals, but I think 
it's beautiful. Y'all know I am a huge fan of Eric LaRocca. I've loved everything they've ever done. So I'm very excited to get into his next work. And thank you so much for sending me an ARC. I feel so honored. I obviously don't know what this is about because it's so teensy teeny tiny. Other than it has some beautiful artwork. And the tagline on the back says that the only thing more brutal than nature is love. I don't know what that means, but it's giving the vibes of like, the earth is overtaking us. They were here before us. They own this planet, not us. And that is the type of horror that I like. So I'm going to get to that so soon. The next book that I have here was recommended to me by Beth's All Booked. I love her channel. I've been watching her for so long. She's a fellow Karen Slaughter enthusiast. And she had a creepy kid book rec that sounded really interesting. So I went ahead and picked it up. This is a British thriller called When I Was 10 by Fiona Cummins. And I guess it's about a girl, something tragic happened when she was 10 um, in her family and she hasn't spoken about it. She's been like mute to the press since the event. And now years later, she's going to come out and tell what happened when she was 10 and face a devastating truth, apparently, according to the synopsis. It's a thriller. It's kind of a chunk. It's pretty big and thick, but sounds really good. Next up, I have another little novella. This is A Living Dead Girl by Elizabeth Scott. It is a kidnapping story. So this girl, Alice, was taken by a killer five years ago, and she thought she knew how her story would end, but she was wrong. You think you want to die, but you don't, you won't, you just are. So I guess she is living in captivity with this man who kidnapped her sounds super creepy it's super short it's gonna be a fast read i have heard wonderful things about this on the internet so <laughs> i'm excited to get into this one as well staying on the dark horror theme because that is my favorite theme halloween slaughter by sergio gomez oh my god i gotta get to this one this month i am so freaking excited for this one this is the follow-up to camp slaughter which i absolutely loved one of the most fun, fast-paced, high-octane slashers I've ever read. And we follow a really interesting villain who is a cannibal and he's like kind of giving Leatherface, but more. Like I felt empathy for a cannibalistic serial killer in the last book. I've never felt empathy for Leatherface, so I don't know how Sergio Gomez did that, but it's amazing and I'm ready for part two. I also have this really cool edition of The Great Gatsby. It is so beautiful. If y'all saw my fall aesthetic reading vlog, I went to a little tiny adorable bookshop in that video and that's actually where I got this beautiful edition and I love The Great Gatsby, but this is actually going to go on my bar cart. I have some glasses like this. So I thought it would be really cute on my bar cart and I like to add these little literary touches all over my house. Um, so yeah, that's why I got this, but everybody knows the story of The Great Gatsby. It's just a beautiful edition. I have a, another arc here that was kindly sent to me by Amber and Danielle. They wrote Someone Had to Do It, which is a good for her thriller. It's kind of giving me Last Mrs. Parish vibes because of this girl, Brandy, who is an intern at a New York fashion house. We are following her as she entangles her life and finds out the secrets of Taylor, who is a model and an influencer, and she's looking for someone to take down. So it's like that rich people drama, elite society kind of vibe, and there's two girls just going at each other's necks. I also picked up some books from Target in my fall aesthetic vlog, and I showed y'all a couple of them, but not all of them. So I got Meet Me Under the Mistletoe by Jennifer... No not Jennifer, not her legal name, by Jenny Bayless. And I really loved Jenny Bayless's last uh, Christmas romance. So I figured I would like this one as well. And y'all, I'm already preparing for the holidays. I'm already excited for Christmas reading. It's about a woman who runs a secondhand bookshop in a cute, adorable little town and has a second chance romance. <laughs> And quickly jumping back into horror, I also picked up Hidden Pictures by Jason Recollect. I don't know what this vowel is. I'm guessing it's an A, but 
but this sticker is really fucking me up. And this follows a nanny, I do love nanny thrillers, who is watching this five-year-old kid and he's increasingly and increasingly drawing more and more disturbing images that get her on edge about what's going on around the house she's staying in. I also got Wrong Place, Wrong Time by Jillian McAllister. So this is about a woman who witnesses her son kill a man literally kill a man she sees her son stab a person to death and she's like you know what i'm gonna get you out of this and she does it in a very creative clever way this is sounds so good i don't know the like mom son thing is kind of giving lucinda berry vibes i'm very excited for this one how many times can i say i'm very excited i am very excited next up i had a little random trip to barnes and noble actually it wasn't random it was specifically to buy this book by Frederick Bachman, The Winners, which is the third book in the Bear Town trilogy. I absolutely loved the first two, so I'm very excited to round it out with this absolutely massive chunk of a 700 page book that I will definitely be reading over Christmas break and crying my eyes out. So that's the plan with this. If you haven't read Bear Town, it's all about a small Swedish town that completely relies on their hockey team as their main source of entertainment and income and how that all comes crumbling down when a scandal breaks the hockey team apart. I also got got when I went to go pick up that book because Barnes & Noble always has the buy one get one 50% off little paperbacks and I knew that I really wanted Mother Thing by Ansley Hog Hogarth? Hogarth? So I picked this one up. This is a horror about a girl who is desperately trying to connect with her mother-in-law, but her mother-in-law is just an absolute monster. And it, this is not a spoiler because it says it on the back. Uh, it happens that the mother takes her own life and her ghost starts to haunt the daughter-in-law. This is literally the worst mother-in-law that you could ever, ever think of. Also this cover. Hello. It's giving vintage horror. I'm so excited. And because I got that one, I wanted to get another one for 50% off. So I went with this random one that I've never heard about. Nobody's talked about it. But it has the Riley Sager font on the front. <laughs> and I think that did something Pavlovian to my brain where I wanted it. This is Where the Truth Lies by Anna Bailey. And the tagline really got me. It says, in a town full of secrets, it's hard to tell where the truth lies. It's giving like small town Megan Miranda vibes. It says when a 17 year old Abigail disappears after a party, the festering secrets and longstanding resentments of the small mountain town of Whistling Ridge, Colorado emerge with devastating consequences. <laughs> A disappearance of a young girl in a small town in a wintry setting yeah this is a December read for positive positive. and now let me get into my book of the month picks and the couple that they sent me obviously I was sponsored by book of the month in this month so they sent me two of their picks the first one is foul lady fortune by Chloe gong and this one I picked because my best friend in real life who reads, she said that the other Chloe Kong books that she read were like absolutely phenomenal and she thinks I would like them. So I gotta go get those, but I also wanted to get her new release. This is fantasy vibes, so I'm a little nervous, but it says it's 1931 in Shanghai. And the stage is set for a new decade of intrigue. Four years ago, Rosalind Lang was brought back from the brink of death, but the strange experiment that saved her also stopped her from sleeping and aging and allows her to heal from any wound. In short, she cannot die, and she's using her abilities to be an assassin for her country. That sounds like it slaps. Now, I am not a fantasy adventure girl, but... This is a female assassin who can't die. I'm in. I also got the Kiss Curse by Erin Sterling, which is a cutie little small town Halloween romance. It's kind of like a, what is that classic rom-com, You Got Mail situation where small town girl has a little shop and big city boy opens up a rival shop across the way, does not realize that he's ruining her business and ruining her life while they fall in love. Yeah, it's giving that. 
And then of course I had to get my own book of the month. Wasn't enough that they sent me <laughs> to. I had to get other things for book of the month. The pick that I chose for October was The Family Game by Katherine Stedman. And this is a twisty little thriller about a rich eccentric family and a time-honored tradition of a lethal game of survival. Here are the rules. Listen carefully, do your research, trust no one, and run for your life. It's giving like kind of Knives Out vibes. I also picked up a physical copy from Book of the Month of The House Across the Lake because I realized that I just read the arc of this book and I never actually bought it. So now I have a copy with the Book of the Month logo that matches all my other Riley Sager copies. And I love this one. It's one of my favorites of the year. I know it's very divisive, but me personally, I loved it. I love speculative weirdo thrillers, so I'm very happy to own this one now. And I got another add-on because y'all bullied me into it, okay? Y'all have been all up on me about The Change. The Change by Kirsten or Kirsten Miller. And this is about a woman who's having a midlife crisis and she thinks she's hearing voices from the dead. So her and two other women go on a quest to listen to the dead and avenge them. Like I guess they find a missing girl's body and they're trying to avenge her death or figure out what happened to her. Listen, y'all think I'm gonna love this and I'm blindly trusting you. And then the last few books here I have are very, very exciting. Well, wait, I don't know how she ended up here. <laughs> this one, it's still very exciting, but I don't know how it ended up in that stack. It is Too Hot to Handle by Tessa Bailey. This Tessa Bailey release, I heard nothing about, okay? I've heard nobody talk about this for some reason, but I'm very excited for it. This is a male pining for the female kind of romance. Also, pining for the female that's the worst verbiage I literally could have ever used but basically this girl goes on a road trip gets stranded out in the middle of the desert and this big hunky man comes on a motorcycle to rescue her and they spend a few nights together but he's trying to prove to her that he's not just for the night he's forever now we're on to the exciting stuff okay so I took a trip to Barnes and Noble with my friend Bailey who I was talking about earlier she recommended Foul Lady Fortune she is probably the biggest reader in my real life like IRL friends um, and we wanted to do a video on my channel together where I pick four books of my top favorites that she has to read and she picked four books of her top favorites that I have to read because we have wildly different tastes and we thought it would just be such a fun time so all of these books are pretty out of my comfort zone except for one but I'm super excited to get to them I'm going to be vlogging this taste test in November the first one is the x-hex by Erin Sterling don't know why I haven't picked this one up um it is up my alley it's the precursor to the kiss curse which I just talked about small town Halloween romance about a witch who placed a curse on her ex but now it's a second chance romance so he's coming back around and she's like fuck I cursed you uh I didn't hear the greatest things about this but this is one of my friend Bailey's favorite romances so I'm giving it a try for her she also got me Cinder by Marissa Meyer and this is like a Cinderella retelling it's YA and it's like a futuristic thing um 16 year old Cinder a gifted mechanic is a cyborg She's a second-class citizen with a mysterious past and is reviled by her stepmother. But when her life becomes intertwined with the handsome Prince Kai's, she suddenly finds herself at the center of an intergalactic struggle and forbidden attraction. Okay, so this is giving Star Wars. I like it. I like it initially. We'll see. We also have The Wrath and the Dawn by Renee Adi Adie? Adie? I don't know. So this sounds like a fantasy monsterish romance. It's about a man who rules a city, but he's a monster. He takes a new wife each night, but she's killed by sunrise. And finally, he has a bride who survives the night. Night after night, she mesmerizes him with her storytelling. Oh, this is what she was talking about. This is like the tale of a thousand ten thousand nights or whatever retelling she loves retellings girl loves a retelling so i'm about to read a lot of retellings and my last one i'm very excited for because i know sahar from basically bookish reads likes this book and that is stalking jack the ripper by carrie menescalco and um 
yeah, this is about a girl who stalks and kills Jack the Ripper. Um, I don't know what you can tell about Bailey's reading taste just by these books. She likes a dark girl, a witchy, monstrous, strong female lead who wants to kill a man, but also kind of wants to sleep with him. <laughs> And that's why I love her. So those are all of the books that I had to show you. I hope you enjoyed this little poppin of a haul in the vlog. I, while I'm daily vlogging, I wanted to make them a little bit longer for you. Uh, so there's that. Now back to the regularly scheduled vlog. So I hope you enjoyed the little haul. Next, I'm going to get into Gone to See the River Man. And I'm using this for the extreme horror prompt even though I just read Extreme Horror, uh, I wanted to do an individual book for every single prompt. Uh, obviously, because it's my readathon and I'm trying to flex, you know. So, Gone to See the River Man. It's about a woman who starts corresponding with a guy who's in jail and he's like this infamous serial killer and she's so pulled in by his charm. <laughs> If a serial killer could have charm, uh, he's definitely manipulative and a horrible person. So maybe she's caught under that spell and he convinces her to go do a task for him in which she has to go see the river man to do some type of voodoo shit. Um, I love voodoo. Y'all know I'm obsessed with the Child's Play series. That is my favorite horror kind of series. So I love voodoo stuff, uh, also love serial killer stuff, and I've heard wonderful things about this one. So we're going to get into it. I'm going to tell you how extreme it is and my thoughts on the first 50% when I'm done. Hello vlog, I am 50% of the way through Gone to See the River Man and I'm really liking it. It is super atmospheric, just like following this main girl and she actually brought her sister along on this journey to go see the River Man. Ah, it is scary. Like I'm actually getting scared of reading this as the like sun was setting. I was like, ah, this is so scary. The atmosphere is just like, and there's already been a twist that I did not see coming and it was dark. It was dark, dark. So we are following obviously them on their journey, but we're also following two other different types of chapters. We get to read the letter correspondence between her and the serial killer. And then we also get flashbacks of her and her sister's childhood uh, growing up and something traumatic happened to their other sibling who is no longer with us. So I'm wondering what the connection's gonna be there to the present timeline, but I'm just loving it. I cannot wait to get on sprints and read more of this. I'm about to hop on sprints on my channel to kick off Happy Halloween with Deja and Kat. So it should be a really fun time. But before then, I'm going to spend some time with Cameron and make us some dinner. So let's do that.
Hello vlog. I am about 80% through Gone to See the River Man and wow, this is extreme. <laughs> I'm glad I picked this one for the extreme prompt because it certainly is. It is dark. I just read one of the most uncomfortable skin crawling scenes I've ever read. If you are an extreme horror fan and you haven't read this one, this is a must read. I can already tell this is going to be five stars. Unless the ending is so bad, it's going to be five stars. Like this shit is crazy. I am so interested in how all of this is connected. I'm sorry, I got to keep reading. And these prints are super, super fun. So we are having a great first day of Haley Weed. Hey vlog. I just finished Gone to See the River Man on sprints. It's a five star. This is one of the easiest five stars I've given this year. It is phenomenal. It is a twisty, trippy horror ride that takes you through the depths of hell. And I mean that very literally. If you're easily scared by like hell or like devil depictions, like scary religious motifs, this is not for you. If you like that kind of stuff, which I do, Miss Religious Trauma right here, I love that. Um, <laughs> I would recommend this, but I know that uh, not everyone will be okay with this stuff in here. It is very very intense, but I think it's done really, really well. I think Christopher Triana, just in my one experience that I've read from him, writes extreme horror with a lot of tact that I don't see from many other extreme horror authors. I've talked about this before, that the genre is really run by misogynists and there's not a lot of tact in the writing style. Christopher Triana, to me, is not one of those people. There is intention behind every single word written in this book, and I thought he actually wrote a female character, multiple female characters, with a lot of tact and emotional intelligence. So, wow, Haley loves a man. <laughs> A book written by a man. We never thought we'd see the day, but I'm easily giving this five stars. Next up on Sprints, I'm going to pick up The Mother Next Door, our buddy read, but you're going to have to tune in for tomorrow's daily vlog, day two of Haley Ween, to see my thoughts and to see all the fun stuff I'll be getting into on the second day of Haley Ween. Don't forget to like this video if you liked it and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And don't forget to hit that link down below and go check out Atlas Coffee Club at my link, get 50% off and free shipping. And I will see you guys tomorrow in our next daily vlog.